Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in keeping with our theme of hardware that costs less than your lunch, today we're going to be taking a look at this AMD 64X2 4200 Plus which we picked up for £1, $1.20 or €1.17. Either way this thing was cheap. Originally released in 2005 as a 939 socket CPU, then again as a socket AM2 CPU a year later, this was one of the first dual core desktop processors from AMD. Annoyingly, although I ordered the AM2 version and it says AM2 on the label, it was the 939 version that turned up which meant I had to borrow an older motherboard and was limited to using DDR RAM. Specifically, only 4GB of the stuff. Thankfully, I was able to stick with the GTX 1060 for benchmarking, and after switching to Windows 7 for a guarantee in compatibility, it was time to test some games. Now, I know there's a huge bottleneck, but it meant that the CPU could reach its full potential here, and although we couldn't get the hardware monitoring software to work today for some reason, I can confirm the CPU was running at 100% load almost all of the time, and we still managed to get Fraps running so that you could see the frame rate. So let's get into it. We started with Crisis 3 and as today was about pushing this old CPU to its limit, we stuck to 1080p throughout but turned the settings down to the low preset so that we could actually play the game suitably and record. Now although a lower end graphics card would provide a better balance, this gives us an idea of how well the CPU keeps up in a sense to a modern but mid range GPU. With Crisis, we saw 20 FPS on average here but when gunfighting calmed down and we were left to wander the environment a little bit, the frame rate did sit closer to 30. Dirt Rally Next, which I've always regarded as a very well optimised game, and today it came through for us again, returning at 55 FPS on average, with the benchmark test here and the ultra settings preset. I've said it before, but I haven't encountered a lot of hardware that can't run this game at all. There was a bit of stutter in third person view and first person seemed to eliminate most of that. So if that's how you prefer to drive, then you're in luck. Next up it's Fallout 4 again at ultra settings and despite the constant stuttering and frame drops, the game averaged out at 30 FPS. This CPU is definitely trying its best to keep up and it's quite impressive all things considered. I should also mention that this result was very similar even when we changed the settings and resolution to low with 720p which yielded the same sort of average. So if it's going to stutter at 720p we may as well crank things up all the way to full HD. Finally we tried out League of Legends with the very high graphical preset with absolutely no problem and averaged 120 FPS throughout. This result gave our CPU a little bit of a break and less demanding games like this one would still run fine as they don't require much CPU or GPU power. So there we have it. Sure, it wasn't just the CPU which acted as a limiting factor here. The older RAM and the fact that there was only 4GB of it held us back as well. But having said that, I think this almost 12 year old CPU is still somewhat capable and it also highlights just how a severe bottleneck can impact gaming performance. If you're looking for a CPU that would sit well at the centre of a basic home build or light gaming system, this would do just fine. And despite going back and trying out all the games at lower settings and resolutions, we didn't see much of an improvement for those of you wondering. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it all that much. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as always, I hope to see all of you in the next video.